Hello and welcome to another episode of Art Tips and Life Blips, the show where the points don't matter and the... Alright, yeah, I'm gonna get sued for that one. This is Siege, your host and illustrator for today. This is my face, I'm back, and I'm trying out a new layout with this uh, video. So just, you know, bear with me a little bit while I test out new things and play around and whatnot. I'm trying to be able to maximize uh, how I paint and like the different type shapes of canvases that I can use. So that's why I'm doing that. In other news, thank you guys for 500 subscribers. That really, that's like, wow. I made a video about 100 subscribers like a few weeks ago, and I'm already at 500, I don't even know what to say. So I'm thinking that um, 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a bit of a giveaway or, or maybe a contest or something like that. You know, just let me know down in the comments what kind of, uh, what, what you guys would like to see at 1,000. So like, staggered by 500 individual people following, it's not a bunch of bots, it's real people. So, thank you guys like crazy. Also, you may have noticed that I shaved. Yeah. That was for you. So hopefully you appreciate the work that I put in here. It's not that much, but you know, whatever. Today I'm gonna answer some questions again. So this question is by Zemo Nunoke. And uh, you know, I'm gonna put it at the bottom so you can read the question on your own. What they're basically asking me is how hard is it to live as an illustrator? They mentioned that sometimes they'll see their friends who have profession who have a professional level who are working but they're not making any money and also they're working extremely hard but not making anything while their friends are actually making a stable living and it's kind of discouraging to them so let's uh let's jump into this question and answer that okay z mononoke first of all your name's awesome and maybe it's z mononoke i don't know I'm just going to say it Z because that's how I've been raised to say these letters. This is actually a perfect time for me to tell you these things as I'm going through it myself and I feel like I've figured out a couple things and now I'm just starting to put them into action myself. This is something that I learned from some really great artists. Um, one of them, his name is Noah Bradley and uh, he's an illustrator and people were a bit upset with him because he's a businessman and it's kind of funny to me but I'll, I'll explain that soon and the other artist is Darren Yao now both of these artists I look up to and admire very very much they have both actually helped me uh, Darren I, I remember emailing him in the past and he used to help me out a lot even though he didn't have to but he always used to give me tips and advice so thank you Darren if you're watching this which I doubt you are because you're busy the thing you have to realize about art is yes it is about talent and you know if you're a fantastic artist you know it's going to help you get work that's just something that's just how it works you need a solid portfolio but at the same time you need to be a hustler in a sense you need to know how to make a dollar or and and these are these are things that you know some schools cover it to a tiny extent but as an artist it's really hard to figure that out so you have to kind of go searching for knowledge and go searching around and try to figure this kind of stuff out so it's a little bit hard there's lots of resources out there I can actually put a list in the description below for you if you want to check out some of the resources that you can use to um, you know make a living in art because for, and nowadays when talent is so easy to find like nowadays we have the internet so it's like a huge talent pool all in it all easily accessible literally by email you can email them at that exact moment they can get that back and you can work together so now you have to do different things for yourself to stand out as an illustrator so you have to be business savvy you need to know how to make a dollar off of your work even if you're talented if you're not doing certain steps to get your work out there nobody's going to see your work nobody's going to notice you and you're going to be you're going to end up being discouraged because you're not making any money off of your work now I completely understand this because for the longest time I wasn't doing any of these things and it's only now that I'm actually starting to and I'm realizing I'm seeing the changes now the first thing I'm going to tell you about is like it really depends on how you want to go about it too if you do want a stable job if you want to work in a company there's a whole section there's a whole way to go about doing that and that's not my approach just because I don't really want to work in I guess a stable job I want to work in as a freelancer so I mean I've been focusing more on the freelance side of things and running your own business and you know there's so many different ways I, like I said I can put a bunch of the advice in the in the description below but you know I'm gonna just name off a couple things right now now when it comes to just getting a stable job 
all you gotta do is really, really push your work out there. You know, you gotta be applying to people, doing, um, you know, make sure that your portfolio is nice and renewed. You know, it's good to have a good website for your portfolio, right? Like, there's lots of free portfolio websites out there, but it's also, it, um, and also a really easy way to do it is to buy a domain name because they're about like ten dollars a year which is a really really low price if you think about it right and then you can actually just take a blog spot or a tumblr or something like that and you can mask it with your with your URL with your name right and then you just make an email that goes directly to that usually with Gmail or something and there you go now you've got a professional looking website when you send it out people are gonna take you more seriously because you're not sending them your DeviantArt portfolio which even though the work might be amazing in your DeviantArt portfolio it's just not seen on that professional level when you have like like so and so art.com rather than like r rather than like for myself it would be like howlsiege.deviantart.com it's less professional than if I were to go yeah you can find my work at siegeart.com they know okay that's his and it gives off a professional presence right and so you can go about applying to these jobs uh, you know you just have to write up sometimes you have to write up a cover letter for them it's usually it actually helps to write up a cover letter for these jobs to show them that you're a little bit more interested and then you know you go through the interview process and whatnot you might have to do an art test if it's a game studio because they like to do that but yeah I mean it's pretty like to get a to get a regular type of like full-time job in a studio it's pretty much the same way that everybody has to go through it for freelance which is something that I am doing that way is consistency consistency is a key in freelance people like to think that that you know get making it big in art is about luck but I think that's a crock that's that there's no luck if somebody sees your work by chance is it really by chance or was it because you were consistently putting work out there for them to see? It's not a luck thing. You need to be consistent. You need to give people a reason to come back. And if people come back to check out your work on maybe your blog, maybe you have a Facebook page, maybe you're updating your website, whatever, some sort of social network, people will talk about it because they understand that they're always going to be something new. There's going to be a higher chance of them coming back. And if people see you working hard as well, they will actually feel more inclined to help you out. When I see an awesome YouTube page, I look at when their latest video was. If their latest video was six months ago, there's a lower chance that I'm going to subscribe because I feel a little bit sad. I want them to continue making videos, but sometimes they're not making videos anymore. And so then I feel less inclined to subscribe to that person's channel. It's also the same thing with a company or whatnot. They'll come and they'll check out your work. Right? But if they see that you're not really posting, they don't know what's happening. They don't know if you've been hired by other studios or something, if you're full-time now, if you're not even an artist anymore. But if you're consistent, you're putting work out there, first of all, there's a higher chance that they'll find you. And second of all, there's, there's more incentive for them to send you an email going, hey, we're so-and-so, we really love your art, and we're looking for an illustrator uh, to do some work on so-and-so project. It's a higher chance because you're showing that you're still there, you're still working, you're still putting yourself out there. So it all really works for you. Now, there's tons of different things that you can do in terms of business and whatnot in order to get your work out there. I'm not going to cover them all here. I'm just going to put a link to uh, Noah Bradley's video. It's, it's a paid video. But he puts a lot of free information out there too, so you can find that. Also, if you just skim through the internet and go through different threads on the internet, you'll find lots of information on how to make it as an artist. But the thing is, you have to break out of the whole, if I'm good, everything's going to happen mentality, because that works only part of the time. But even the best artists that you see, you don't see that they're promo you don't see the promotion that they're putting behind their work. Even when an artist sells a print, it's still a source of promotion. Some artists only sell prints because it's a promotion. You see what I mean? You have to think about it in a different way. You can't always be, I guess, a purist. Even fine artists. Fine artists are the ones that I've been studying. The guys who do gallery shows and whatnot. And I feel like those guys really have it the right way because they work directly with the public. They're always consistent with coming out there and doing work with the public. Sometimes they'll be doing live shows. Sometimes they'll be doing live painting and stuff like that. And they, they work with the public and so people always see them and then they get more opportunities because they're consistently being seen, consistently hosting things, consistently being on panels, right? 
So it's the consistency that really helps them and then obviously you need a little bit of business savvy in order to work with it once you get it. And there's lots of different ways to promote and whatnot. But hopefully that helps you. You shouldn't be discouraged. You just need to be consistent. Keep on working. It's the same reason why the artist who you feel doesn't really deserve to make all that money is probably making money because they're hustling, they're playing the game, they're, they understand how it works to work in the business side of things and they make things happen. So now it's time for you to make things happen. Don't worry about other people's success and fame. Don't worry about what level you're at now because if you keep on pushing it and you keep on putting in your time and effort, it's going to pay off in the end run. Hopefully I helped you with that. It was a bit of a long answer. I think I'm just going to do this one question for today because this is a bit of a longer one and I felt like I needed to give it a bit more time. And in other news, I'm going to be at the Formative Art Show. It's actually a group art show that's going to be happening in Toronto on Saturday. So if you guys live in the GTA area, the Greater Toronto area, if you lived here, you would know that. Um, you can, and you're able and you're free to drop down. I'm going to put a link again in the description below for you to check out the details on when that is on Saturday. But I'm going to be there on Saturday night. I'm going to be hanging out and hopefully I get to meet some of you guys. If anybody who lives close to the city and isn't busy with finals and whatnot, um, I'd love for you to come out and meet me. And uh, yeah, that would just be really awesome to see you there. I'm just submitting a few pieces, probably four pieces to the show. And if you see me, we're gonna have a dance battle because the music's gonna be awesome and I'm just that's just what's gonna have to happen we're gonna have to dance battle so you know if, and if so if you actually see me call me out on that because I will dance battle it's, it's not, not a joke thank you again for watching another episode of art tips and life blips this has been your host and illustrator Sage. if you guys like this don't forget to follow me on Twitter where I complain about stuff all the time because it's my only outlet um, follow me on Facebook where I attempt to be more professional but probably fail. But hey, it's great, whatever. I'm also on Tumblr as well. So I will see you guys next week. Remember, every single Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. So tell your friends, share my videos, subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Why haven't you subscribed already? Thank you again for 500 subscriptions. 500 subscribers. And I'm gone. So, uh...